In the past, I often told my friends and family about the extraordinary people I meet when traveling and wished I interviewed them. During my travels in Hanoi, Vietnam in 2024, once again, I met someone with an incredible travel story and made sure that I interviewed her because someone out there needs to hear her story and be inspired. Hey, what up fam? Um, this is Ronnie from Finding My Tribe and I definitely found one member here. We met, we're in Hanoi, Vietnam and she has an incredible travel story. So I'm going to let her introduce herself and then we're gonna start. I'll ask questions and we're just gonna have a good time, all right? So here is Miss Carla. Take it away. Hello. <laughs> uh, my name is Carla. I'm from Philly, Philadelphia, originally. Tri state. <laughs> and I'm currently in Hanoi as a English teacher. I've been to many different countries, about at least 30 countries, some vacation. 30. 30, yes. <laughs> Yeah, maybe like 34 or something like that now. But some just vacation, some just visiting, some living, some working. So right now I'm in Hanoi teaching English and working here. Okay, so let's get started with where did your love for travel start? Like the very beginning. So the first time I went abroad, I was... 17 and I just went on a trip with my mom to the Bahamas right after I graduated from high school. Funny thing was though, I didn't have a license and I didn't have a passport. At the time you didn't need one because it was before 9-11. So to go to the Bahamas, you didn't need a passport if you were a minor and you were traveling with your parents. So I guess that was the first time I really just saw something a little bit different than the city that I grew up in. I had been to Florida and a few other places, but it was just a different place where um, everybody looked like me. The food was delicious. The water was delicious. And then in college, I just started to travel to different islands, a lot of times with friends or for spring break. And that kind of got me into seeing different oceans and the water and how nice it can be outside of um, our own country. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So one thing that's like really special about your experience is that when you traveled, you started going to these different islands, you found a talent that you didn't know you had, right? Mm -hmm. An interest in swimming. Oh, yes. Oh, let's get into that, lady. <laughs> yes. Yes. I was always a swimmer from when I was very little. I was very good at swimming. I loved the water. I was on a swim team in middle school, high school, college. So I've always been a swimmer. I was also a lifeguard in high school and college. That was like my first job, my main job. When I started traveling, I started getting into other water sports. So I went to Colombia. I went to San Andres, which is a beautiful island that not a lot of people know about but it's one of the most beautiful places in the world to me and that's the first place I went to scuba dive and I thought that was amazing I spent quite a bit of time in Sayulita Mexico which is the west coast of Mexico and I learned how to surf there so I kind of got into surfing and scuba diving through traveling and then I also met a bunch of people who opened me up into um, scuba diving even more. I had a couple friends. One, she has her own Blacks and Marine Science organization, and she's actually a doctor in marine biology. Her and her friend, well, her fiance now, <laughs> um, who are also avid divers, they were in Belize. And at the time, I was in Guatemala. So I took the journey to Belize from Guatemala through pretty much a couple boats. <laughs> I took a couple boats, went through customs, and took this journey to go visit them. And they were staying in Placencia, which is the southern part of Belize. And this is one of the most beautiful places to dive. So when I went there to visit them, they encouraged me to get certified in scuba diving. I did a basic certification and I went on to do the advanced one because I just loved it so much. Every time we went down, we saw something different. 
I saw sharks. I swam with um, pretty, not super big, but kind of big sharks. Um, I saw beautiful, huge turtles. It was just an adventure every time we went down there. I was afraid at first a little bit <laughs> but as soon as I went under and I saw everything and all the colors I was like oh what is this what is this and I just kept swimming and looking for more stuff to see so yeah, yeah. <laughs> amazing it's like Indiana Jones right <laughs> so you were in college you went to all of these islands after college you graduated she's actually an engineer as well so let's yeah. get all into that <laughs> so you graduated and then where did you go from there so um i graduated from howard university and uh with my chemical engineering degree i ended up working for the u.s government for about 10 years which is it seems like a long time now but i guess it was a long time i was in the washington dc area i still would travel like on vacation and with friends and family here and there but i kind of wanted to travel more long term and go to places where i didn't i couldn't just i didn't want to just stay two weeks or one week i wanted to stay like a month or do different types of adventures and excursions and things like this so a couple friends of mine that were also engineers from howard we were all actually in this engineering sorority at Howard. My one friend, she wanted to do a hiking trip for her birthday. And she is very much like a runner, a hiker, a long distance runner. So I was like, oh, well, it's your birthday. I'll be there, sure, wherever you wanna go. And she said, okay, well, I wanna do this hike to Machu Picchu. Or, <laughs> and I was like, okay. At the time, I had no idea <laughs> like what that was. And so she was like, you know, you might want to start working out. I already worked out a little bit at the gym, but I never really did a proper hike or did any type of hiking workouts. I would run like small races, like 5Ks here and there and just do some, a little bit of weightlifting, but that was it. So it wasn't until I got there, well, I started reading like the information of the itinerary mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, okay. So we have to go to Peru and go to this one town and then we have to stay there for three days, about two or three days, just so our lungs can acclimate to the altitude. And I was like, oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> and then we were taken to another area where we started our hike three days later. And so the hike that she wanted to do was called the Salkate hike, which is the five day hike to Machu Picchu. And it's not a very common hike. Most people do the two day Inca hike, which I would suggest anybody do over the five day hike because it was one of the hardest things I've done in my life. Like it was literally getting up at five o'clock or four o'clock and walking up and down mountains until the sun went down. The altitude was very high. Everyone got sick at least once from some type of altitude sickness. We were lucky because we did have people guiding us and we also had a cook that was there so they made our food so we didn't have to worry about that. We just had to worry about moving forward and just putting one foot in front of the other and like keep going. So we did that for five days and we finally made it to Machu Picchu, which is a beautiful, beautiful place. I had no idea that this city like existed. I, I had seen pictures of it, but I didn't realize that's where we were going. And as we were getting closer and closer and I saw pictures and like, kind of like billboards with like big posters, I was like, oh, this is the place we're going i know this place but i don't like to do a lot of research before i travel places because i like to be surprised so i was very surprised and it was just a beautiful place a beautiful experience we got to stop at like a local coffee farm and make our own coffee like pick the actual beans roast it ourselves drink it it was just a beautiful experience it was hard so i will say um i did experience a little bit of altitude sickness and for me, that just felt like as we were walking and even when I stopped to rest, no matter how much air I took in to breathe, it just felt like I didn't have a full amount of air to take a breath. And so the main thing is pretty much not to panic. 
So I didn't panic, but it was pretty scary. But that kind of started my journey on just like doing more adventurous types of things and just hiking and camping in general. Yeah, because I was about to ask, like, how does it feel? So it's like you're trying to catch your breath and mm -hmm. you just have to chill and relax. Yeah, it's pretty much just relaxing and letting your body take in the air and not breathing too heavy or taking a bunch of breaths because it does feel like even though you're breathing, you're not getting air in. So it can be like very scary, but they did have donkeys. So at one point I just, they were like, just get on this donkey and they can take you for a little bit, maybe like a half an hour or something like that. And by then I was fine. But there were about 10 people from all over the world that were on this hike together. So at some point everyone felt some form of altitude sickness. Some people, got really nauseous and vomited a lot. Luckily that didn't happen to me, but it just hits everybody a little bit different. But there's also medicine you can take. I had no idea you can take medicine and it works for most people. If I would have known, I would have did that, but I didn't yeah. take anything. <laughs> Yeah, okay. So, so you're an engineer, you are hiking, you're taking these wonderful trips. What made you decide to change careers from chemical engineer to teaching? I have been doing the engineering thing for a while. It was 10 years of doing the same type of job. And I kind of just wanted something different. After I did that trip to Machu Picchu, I wanted to just see more. So I started taking longer trips. After Machu Picchu, I saw those pyramids and everything. And I was like, okay, I want to see better pyramids. <laughs> so I decided to go to Egypt. And that was like a long trip for my birthday. And I saw Cairo, I saw the pyramids pyramids, the temples. I did like a hot balloon ride to see the Valley of the Kings and I did a Nile River cruise. So we went to Luxor and Aslan, a bunch of different places and we ended up at the end in Giza and saw the pyramids. And so I did that and that was another long trip. And then I was like, okay, Egypt is cool, but I want to see like other parts of Africa. Okay. <laughs> A little while after that, I decided that I wanted to go to Kenya. So I went to Kenya to see a safari because I wanted to see more brown people. Okay. <laughs> and I also wanted to, wanted to see some animals. So I decided to go on a safari and I went during the Great Migration, which is one part of the year where all the animals migrate from one end of the country into Tanzania. If you go during this time, it's guaranteed that you'll not just see animals, but you'll see a lot of animals. So I saw a lot of animals. Um, I have some amazing videos and pictures of that. And it was pretty much just being in like one of those safari uh, vans or cars. The top comes up so you can like look out or it's just open depending on the day. But um, certain days there were just so many animals like zebras, buffalo, water buffaloes. We saw lions. I saw a leopard, which was huge. But there was just so many animals migrating. There would be like hundreds of animals in this safari. And it was just us and maybe a couple other trucks or vehicles here and there. But this is like a moment in my life where I felt like, wow, like I'm one small person in the middle of like all of these animals just doing their thing. And there's just like so many things to see in the world. So that's what kind of like led me to kind of say, you know, I don't really want to stay in the U.S. long term. I want to go out and see what else is out there. And um, I kind of wanted to try something different. In my engineering career, I did do a lot of science workshops and things like this that I love to do for middle school, high school, even very small kids and even um, undergraduates. Since I liked that so much, I was like, maybe I should try teaching math and science. So I kind of moved into teaching math and science and I kind of loved it. It was really fun. And then I started teaching. Not too long after that, maybe a year after that is when COVID happened. So, <laughs> so that was like another change. And we were all in the house, you know, for a long time. I was in DC and we had some pretty bad winters, but it was exacerbated because you couldn't go anywhere. You couldn't do anything. So that kind of stopped me for a bit. But um, after a while, I, I had some friends that were doing a little bit of traveling. And I think I went to Aruba 
just to see what it was like when things started opening up a little bit. And I still had to get a test done before I left. I had to get a test done in the airport. And this was the first test where they stick that thing up your nose yeah. like pretty bad. Especially in the airports, it would be pretty bad. I still wanted to go and wanted to see the ocean and see another island that I had never seen before. That turned out fine. Me and a bunch of friends, we rented a house and just stayed out there for maybe like a week. And then after that, I was kind of more like, okay, well, traveling during COVID actually isn't that bad. There weren't that many lines in the airport. There weren't that many people in the airport. I had some other friends that were staying in Colombia at the time. So I went to visit them and that was pretty much the same deal. You had to get a COVID test beforehand or take one in the airport, but there was li literally like nobody on the flights at all. So it was nice. When I went to visit my friends in Colombia, I met a whole bunch of other teachers working there and just working online because everybody was working online at the time. I met a bunch of other teachers who were working and then I was able to work during the day and then go out and do a hike or have an adventure in the afternoon or in the evening. And I was like, okay, I think I'm going to do this for a while. My plan was to just go for like a couple weeks, which I did. And then once I started meeting people, I met a couple teachers that were renting a house and they were like, hey, we got an extra room if you want to rent a room and then you can stay here monthly or whatever in Medellin then you got a place to stay. So when I went home, I was like, all right, I'll think about it. Went home, everything was still closed at home. So it was pretty much still stay inside. But at that point I was like, I'm ready to go. And oh, I think I told you this before, when I flew back into the United States, it was January, what was that day? So oh. I, yeah, <laughs> I flew into, DCA, Ronald Reagan Airport, right outside of DC. And when I flew in, 